G'day folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and welcome to this video review of the 2021 Polygon Siskiyou T8. Or as we like to call it, the Polygon Siskiyou! <laughs> Now the Polygon Siskiyou T sits in between the Siskiyou D, which is Polygon's cross-country bike, and the Siskiyou N, which is their enduro bike. The Siskiyou T is the mid-travel, fun-loving trail bike. So we're talking bikes like the Specialized Stump Jumper, the Trek Fuel EX, the Giant Trance X, and the Norco Fluid. Unlike those bikes, however, the Siskiyou T8 is sold in Australia online via Bicycles Online, and that means, at least on paper anyway, the value for money is really impressive. As per usual, you can find the full review of this bike right now over at flowmountainbike.com. Make sure you click the link in the video description below, and that will take you to the full review of this bike here, which has a load more detail about my experience of testing the Siskiyou T8. And if this is your first time joining us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified of all the new video reviews, just like this one, that we have coming your way in the near future. In this video, I'll be giving more of a broader overview of the Polygon Siskiyou T. I'll be talking about some of the changes over the old bike, and then we'll be having a yarn about what this bike is like to ride on the trail. We'll be talking about what it does well, what it struggles with, and ultimately what kind of rider is suited to the Siskiyou T8. While the Siskiyou T does look quite similar to the old model, it does get an entirely new frame for 2021. It's an all alloy affair and it's built around a linkage driven single pivot suspension design. For the new frame, Polygon has moved the rear shock a little bit further up the down tube and that provides clearance underneath the shock for a 600ml water bottle which is fantastic. It has also changed the suspension kinematics, so Polygon says there's a little bit more anti-squat on the new bike with a slightly higher main pivot and it also says the new suspension design is slightly less progressive than before. As for suspension travel, we have a 140mm fork on the front and 135mm of travel out the back. This bike is built around 29 inch wheels, however, you can get it with 27.5 inch wheels in the small and medium frame sizes. As for geometry, Polygon has taken modern trends on board with the head angle slackening out to 65.5 degrees, the seat tube angle has steepened to 76.5 degrees, and the reach measurement has grown by 25 to 30 millimeters per size. On the medium frame, we've got a very generous 460 millimeter reach. To prevent the wheelbase from getting too long though, Polygon has taken five millimeters off the chainstay length. Rear center is now 430 millimeters long. For 2021, Polygon will be offering the Siskiyou T in two models. There's the Siskiyou T7, which will retail for 2,699 Australian dollars. And then you've got this bike here, the Siskiyou T8, which sells for 3,399 Australian dollars. Now that is very impressive, especially when you consider that it's got a Fox 34 rhythm fork on the front, a float DPS shock on the back. We have a Shimano SLX 1x12 drivetrain, Tektro four piston brakes with 180 millimeter rotors, 2.6 inch Schwalbe Hansdampf tires, and a 150 to 170 millimeter travel dropper post. Out of the box, our medium sized test bike weighs in at 15.08 kilograms, and that's including the inner tubes. Standing at 175 centimeters tall, the medium frame size has suited me really well. While it does have a long 460 millimeter reach, thanks to the steep seat tube angle and a very short 35 millimeter stem, the effective reach isn't all that stretched out. But while the 780 millimeter bar width is a good match for a bike like the Siskiyou T, the profile is quite square and a little bit uncomfortable. I would like to see a handlebar with more back sweep and more up sweep, which would provide an even more comfortable riding position. In terms of setup, Polygon recommends 30% sag for the rear shock. For my 68 kilo weight, I needed around 160 PSI and I set up the rebound damping just one click faster than halfway at eight out of 14 clicks. The fork is even easier to set up thanks to a handy pressure guide on the back of the fork legs. I follow that guide and put 72 PSI inside the air spring and I set the rebound damping at 10 clicks off the slower setting. 
There's also a blue compression lever on the top of the fork and winding that all the way on will lock out the fork completely. I'd actually recommend setting it up about a third to half of the way through its stroke just to provide a little extra compression damping to support the fork under hard braking and on steep descents. Unfortunately, while the rims and tyres are tubeless compatible, Polygon doesn't include tubeless tape and valves with this bike, so it's a BYO affair. I did set up the wheels tubeless and that helped to bring the total weight of this bike down to 14.8 kilograms. It also allowed me to run quite low pressures with just 18 psi in the front and 21 psi in the rear. And despite the big tyres and the generous mass for a 135mm trail bike, the Cisco T8 isn't a terrible climber. Efficiency is good with the increased anti-squat on the new frame providing a pretty stable feel under pedaling. The steeper seat tube angle also puts you in a good climbing position so you don't feel like you're sitting on a recliner when you're going uphill. The suspension is quite active in the open mode though and I did find it would wallow a bit particularly on steeper gradients and if I was pedaling out of the saddle. And combined with the low bottom bracket height I did find I was clipping pedals quite regularly on rocky technical climbs. The rear shock does have a three position compression switch and you've got open, medium and firm settings there. The firm setting is basically a full lockout and I'd reserve that for riding on the road. The medium position is totally usable off-road though. The increased compression damping helps to stabilize the shock to improve pedal efficiency and it also helps to lift the ride height of the bike giving more ground clearance underneath the pedals. Even still, I wouldn't exactly say that the Cisco T8 relishes in cleaning awkward tech climbs. Traction is good, but the front end steering is quite light and that can see the front wheel wander on steeper pinches and on tight switchbacks. Fitting a longer stem would help to slow down the steering a touch and it would also improve the climbing position on this bike. I'd also look at fitting a slightly smaller 30 tooth chainring to give it a little bit more low range grunt. But overall, while this bike is more of a plodder, the climbing performance is totally adequate given its weight and for the type of bike that it is. It all clicks in place when you're bouncing down the trail though with those big 2.6 inch tyres and the supple suspension giving the Cisco T8 a really smooth and floaty feel. There's excellent off the top sensitivity with both the fork and the rear shock and this bike has just a general willingness to absorb a wide range of impacts at typical trail riding speeds. I did end up adding a volume spacer into the fork because the 34 rhythm can plow through its travel a little bit too easily. While that did provide the stability I was looking for, there is room to fit up to four volume spacers inside the air spring. And that's something that heavier and more aggressive riders will want to investigate. As for the rear suspension, it ramps up nicely right at the end of the travel, giving a good bottom out support for big hits and harsh landings. While the stock setup worked for me and I never hit full bottom out once, it is possible to add bigger volume spaces inside this shock to give more support through the latter half of the travel. Overall, the single pivot suspension design works really well, though there is a touch more feedback through the pedals compared to some of the more refined four bar and multi-link designs I've ridden lately. While the back end does swallow most impacts without fuss, if you are smashing into big stuff repeatedly, the rear shock can occasionally struggle to recover in time for the next hit. Again, a bigger volume spacer inside the rear shock will give you more deep stroke support, though it's also worth mentioning that the Cisco T-Frame is also coil shock compatible, and if you really wanted to beef it up, you could also fit a longer 150mm travel fork on the front. I'd be wary about beefing it up too much though because I have to say one of the most endearing traits about the Cisco T8 is just how playful it is on the trail. The 430mm rear centre is quite short and thanks to that 35mm stem the front end steering is quite light and responsive. That means this bike doesn't quite have the same plowability of a bigger travel bike like the Cisco N but it does mean it's much more agile. It's easy to tip over and initiate a turn and the low bottom bracket, supple suspension and grippy tires keep you stuck all the way through. While I wouldn't describe it as whippy per se, it doesn't take a lot of effort to change direction on this bike and it's just a load of fun to carve turns, pop up the front wheel and just generally mess about on the trail. Along with the supportive suspension, the Cisco T8 handles roller coaster flow trails like an absolute champ. Lighter trail bikes in this travel bracket can sometimes feel a bit skittish, particularly if they're fitted with lesser tyres and stiff carbon rims. In comparison, the Cisco T8 feels steady and unfussy. The wheels are definitely a contributing factor. These are quite heavy. They came in at 2.5 kilograms for the bare wheel set. Now, while that does mute the acceleration on the climbs, 
It does help this bike to build and maintain momentum on the descents, improving the overall bike's stability. The geometry also works well with that slack 65.5 degree head angle on the long front center. And while it isn't quite as stable as some of its slacker and bigger contemporaries, the Siskiyou T8 is a great descending bike. There's plenty of traction from the Hansdampf tires, and while these haven't been my favorite in the past, they're really well supported here on these 35 mm wide rims. The casings are really tough, and I haven't suffered a single puncture throughout testing, which is impressive given both tires weigh under a kilo each. That said, the front tire can get overwhelmed on loose conditions on off-piece single track, where the round profile and the high volume casing can float a little bit over loose rocks. For those sorts of conditions, I'd look at fitting a more aggressive Magic Mary on the front for more dependable cornering traction. And I'll also say that aggro riders might find the stock tires a little bit too floaty and may prefer a slightly narrower 2.4 inch or 2.5 inch tire for a bit more cornering precision. That said, I do think the stock tires are a fabulous match for the Siskiyou T8's playful attitude. They're well suited to typical Australian trail center conditions with a really consistent feel and excellent traction on dusty single track and through hard pack berms. As for the rest of the build, there is very little to complain about here. The SLX drivetrain is a firm favorite here at Flow. It's great to see a 150 mil dropper post on the medium frame size, and it caused us no troubles at all throughout testing. And while the wheels are heavy, they are very tough. They're still running true, and there are no dings to the rims whatsoever. The Tektro brakes were a bit of a question mark initially, and I will say they're not the most refined brakes. The lever blades are quite long, which means you have to position them quite far inboard. And there's also quite a lot of dead stroke, which means I had to set the lever reach further away from the grips than I normally would. That said though, the bite point is nice and solid and they've been totally consistent all the way throughout testing. While I personally found the power levels to be perfectly adequate, there isn't as much anchor dropping power compared to an equivalent four piston brake from SRAM or Shimano. Heavier and more aggressive riders will want to consider adding bigger rotors to increase power or potentially look at upgrading the brakes at some point down the line. Otherwise, the whole bike has been relatively low fuss throughout testing. The frame itself doesn't have the most refined finish. The head tube sticker peeled off on a particularly hot summer's ride. The cable ports are kind of basic. There's no armor for the underside of the down tube and the external brake hose routing over the bottom bracket does seem somewhat haphazard. It does have a fabulous paint job though and so far the finish has proven to be plenty durable. There have been no squeaks, creaks or groans at all throughout the test period, though I'm sure home mechanics will be pleased to see a threaded bottom bracket shell. And with the exception of the most rearward seat stay pivot which uses Igus bushings, all the main pivot points use sealed cartridge bearings. And that, my friends, brings us to the verdict of the 2021 Polygon Siskiyou T8. In case you hadn't noticed, I had an absolute blast testing this bike, and hands down, this is the most fun and capable trail bike I've ridden at this price point. It's a terrific package for the money with smooth and easily adjustable suspension, grippy tires, and contemporary geometry. It's unfussy and easy to ride, and it delivers a wide range of performance that's gonna suit a lot of different riders. While top-end bikes are getting mighty pricey these days, the Siskiyou T8 is proof that you don't have to spend the earth to get a versatile, capable, and fun-loving trail bike. Now, if you'd like to read more about my experience of testing the Siskiyou T8, make sure you click that link in the video description below to read the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. If you've got any questions for me about the Siskiyou T8, make sure you drop those into the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for plenty more video reviews coming your way soon. Otherwise, that's it from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Tooroo!